clearer and more disturbing picture of the Gulf of Mexico oil spill. The New York Times says scientists are finding enormous oil plumes deep underwater, including one as large as 10 miles long, 3 miles wide, and 300 feet thick. The reported discovery suggests new evidence the oil spill could be worse than government and BP estimates. Engineers are still trying to thread the needle and insert a siphoning tube with a rubber stopper into the ruptured pipe where the oil is gushing. They ran a snag, ran into a snag rather, when a piece of the equipment needed to be adjusted, but BP says it is confident this latest plan will be successful. And the Associated Press has learned another rig off the Louisiana coast owned by BP operates with incomplete engineering documents. Joining me live now via Skype is oil and gas expert Bob Kavnar. Bob, a good morning to you. Good morning, Alex. I'd like to talk first about this uh, latest reported discovery by the scientists. Um, these enormous oil plumes deep underwater. What does that tell you about the size, the scope of the damage, and, and what kind of damage could these plumes entail? Well, I'll tell you, Alex, I think the discovery of these plumes really confirms what most people in the industry have thought from the very first day, and that is that the, the flow from the well is much higher than the official estimate of 5,000 barrels a day. Many of the scientists that, that I've been reading about or talking to I bet, have said 20 to 25,000, and, and one even came up uh, with a number as high as 70,000 barrels a day. That makes a lot more sense to me in the, kind of the 25 to 50,000 barrels a day because because these big deep water wells are, are very, very productive. Okay, now Bob, but I'm trying to understand, if you've got this plume 10 miles long, 3 miles wide, 300 feet thick, what is this, some big giant glob on mass that's just sitting there, or is it moving in the water, and what happens to anything that it encounters? You know, it's it's going to move it with the loop current uh, within the Gulf. The the challenge with this particular oil is that it tends to be a relatively lightweight. It's a high gravity oil. So what happens is when pressure comes off that oil, the lighter parts of it, the the, the methane, ethane, and the lighter products uh, flash off, and all that's left is this emulsion that floats and, and, and becomes uh, combined with the seawater. Hmm. And that's very, very dangerous to sea life uh, and can, can be very, very dangerous if it comes on shore. Okay. What about the plan right now, this siphoning tube? It's got a stopper at the end of it. I, it didn't work the first time. There was some sort of adjustment that needed to be made, and so they're, they're bringing this equipment up, you know, from a mile from underwater. Do you think it's going to work? They, they seem confident that it will. You know, of all the ideas that have been uh, tried, I think this one has probably got a, a fairly high probability. Mm -hmm. The big challenge here is going to be keeping the, 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 the tubing that they insert into the riser in place. Uh, there's going to be a tremendous amount of back pressure on that, and if they've got a mechanism to hold it, I think that, that they have a chance of making this happen. Look, I know this is a spill of epic proportions, and we're in uncharted territory, certainly, but why don't oil companies have potential fixes for this kind of problem? And, you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but if you looked at Saturday Night Live last night, they were joking about how some of the, the ideas they're coming up with, oh, yeah, my five-year-old daughter thought of this one. I mean, it, it does seem like, really, that's your best idea? Yeah, yeah it, it actually is pretty shocking to those of us in, in the business that uh, a company like BP is not more prepared for some kind of, uh, of, of incident of this magnitude. I think everyone, uh, as we move deeper and deeper in, into the Gulf of Mexico, became more and more confident in the very, very high-tech equipment that's being used. But a lot of that equipment, like the blowout preventer that happened to be on this transocean rig, was almost 10 years old. Mm. And, and the, the, I think the amount of regulation needed to assure that that piece of equipment is absolutely reliable is going to be important here. Sure forward. is. Okay. Bob Kavnar, thanks for speaking with us. Appreciate it so sure. much. Yeah. Have a good day.